everyone, and welcome to the Cardinal Stadium for CTN's live coverage of high school football. It's somewhat a return to normalcy as fans return. Cardinal Nation is back. The field is brand new and beautiful. The home opener is the Cardinals host the St. Francis Saints. Joe Young, Howie Shapiro up above and very excited to be here and excited to have a few more bodies in the stands. Student section a little smaller than we had hoped, but it's raining um, and school hasn't started yet, but it's great to have some fans in the stands. Well, I'm like a kid in the candy store here tonight because this is what this is what I love and this is what I live for behind us. It's high school football. It's not Friday night, but it's Thursday night, but it's just the atmosphere is, is phenomenal. And, th and this Coon Rapids team is you know, coming to look at the ball, try and bounce back after a loss. So this will be the first game for St. Francis. But the fact that they're playing at home on this beautiful new field, very exciting. The Saints, uh, as you mentioned, it's their season opener. They only got two games in last season, and they said at this point uh, they're passing game a little ahead of where their running game is. So they're going to look to uh, Jackson Skoquist, their left-handed hurler, to really move things along. When Co I talked to Coach Swaggart uh, the other day, and he talked about the fact that their passing game was a little bit ahead, and they're going to look to pass in order to set up the run. Typically, teams look to run in order to set up the pass, so it's going to be a little reverse here tonight, but St. Francis, who had an interesting season last year, they had to pro pause their program twice, only played two games, looking to get a good start here in their first game. Well, and on the flip side, Coon Rapids returns a, a two-year leader in the backfield, David Gibley, did not get the best start, did get to the end zone once, but only 58 yards, held to about three and a half yards per carry uh, in the season opener. David is one yard away from 1,100 total yard, or, or rushing yards in his career. So obviously he's gonna get that tonight and he's gonna surpass that. This will be an interesting, this will be an interesting game. They want to get him going. They want to develop this running game here tonight, especially on a rainy evening. Wes Johnson with a big boot, driving it halfway through the end zone and a touchback. No chance for a Coon Rapids return. They will start first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Josh Dubois getting the, the call as the starter. Uh, he played the second half of the, the opener up in Brainerd last, uh, last week, threw for a little over 100 yards, a couple of interceptions. Uh, but, uh, you know, getting some kinks out. Well, yeah, he was early eight, on. He was eight of fifteen for 108 yards in those two picks, and and they're and and they, really what Coach uh, Russin said is that he just has to think. He can't overthink things. He just has to make his reads, let the game come to him, and don't overthink and don't, you know, just be confident. And that's what they're looking for him, from him tonight. When he will start out of the pistol with. Ghibli in the backfield. He's got three receivers to the left and one to the right. The handoff goes to Ghibli. He's got some room off the left side, and he is going to pick up some nice yardage out across the 35 to the 36-yard line, a gain of 16 and a first down. Yeah, and, and talking with Coach Swaggart about the defense, we're going to see it again. Nice hole, good blocking up front. You're going to see him create that hole, and David Ghibli does such a nice job with his legs using, keeping him moving until he's brought down, but a nice gain. They'll line up three receivers to the right, a little pump fake in some trouble as Dubois able to tuck it down and pick up a couple. He's just shy of the 40 yard line. So a gain of three. And talking to Coach Swaggart about his defense, he feels that they're undersized, but they really play hard. And, and the fact that they, they feel like they're coming in with a little bit of a chip on their shoulders, tackled well in their scrimmages. I mean, as we mentioned, this is their first game of the year. So second and seven from the 39. Dubois, play action, pass is complete to Jared Fearing, a first down, just shy of midfield. You know, I like that play. Again, Fearing just snuck over the middle a little bit, created some space for himself. And Dubois did a nice job of delivering the football, uh, obviously moving the sticks. Ten yard gain. And another first down, first and 10 from their own 49. Balance formation with two receivers either side. Ullman now in motion from left to right. Straight drop back, rolling to his right is Dubois. Throws a high one down the right side. And a great job no. coming back to put his toes in, but he had stepped on the line. A great effort from Dominic Ullman, but uh, that ball kind of hung up in the air a long time. 
And he was out of bounds, incomplete pass. Another look at it, and you'll see Ullman step oh, yeah, out of bounds yeah. and then try and get his toes back, but it's an incomplete. Made a nice catch, though. Well, I like the play on first down because, you know, you, you get your defense thinking about maybe it's going to be a run here, and you're able to get a receiver behind the defensive backs. And, and that time, again, he just that throw wasn't where it needed to be, and it was a little bit floated a little bit on him, and they couldn't make the completion. On second down, the handoff to Ghibli. He's hit at the line and dives forward for a gain of two. It's going to set up third and long. Yeah, and that defense up front, I mean, we talked about the fact that they're undersized, but they're quick, and they're going to try and, and really close that those holes. And for Coon Rapids, offensively, uh, the big boys up front really just have to control that line of scrimmage and, and have to just make sure you stay in your lane and you make your blocks because they're going to open holes for David Ghibli. When David Ghibli has an opportunity to run, it's uh, defense has to be aware. They had Fearing lined up as a split end on the right side. Now goes wide out. Three guys wide to the right. Straight drop to boys. Looks left. Pumps. Now throws. And this one is incomplete. Thrown high and out of bounds. Looking for Darius Hewlett. And again, uh, he had a little bit, about a half a step. But again, the throw was just a little underthrown and to the outside towards the sideline. And it hung up there. It did. And that's the last couple of passes he's thrown have, have hung up there. And the, he, uh, the Cardinals are going to punt the ball here, which was a nice drive. And unfortunately, it stalled. Punter is Sean Sullivan. Back to return is Isaac Vincent. Sullivan, decent punt. Sullivan takes it from the 26, avoids the first tackle, able to spin his way out to about the 32-yard line. So pretty good field position for the Saints in their first offensive effort of the season. Well, it'll be interesting to see this uh, St. Francis offense here. We talked about the fact that the passing game's a bit ahead of the, the running game, as you see Brent Swagger, the head coach, 15 years in the program coaching with the St. Francis football squad. And they will run straight shotgun with two guys in the backfield. That's Sam Rose and Devin Fisher. They have two wideouts on the left side, one on the right. Skoquist. Looks to his left, quick throw, nearly picked off. A good read on the play by Max Walls. Max Walls had a fumble recovery in the season opener, nearly had the pick. Oh, he had, he had, the, the, interception. He had the interception yep. off the tip. Yep. That's correct. Nearly at his second. Well, for uh, new defensive coordinator, Zach Neighbors defense, they've been playing aggressive. And, and really the key for defensively for the Cardinals is to continue to stay aggressive. They want to make sure they wrap up on tackles. And they can't afford to give up a big play. And you saw good, good aggressive defense on that first opportunity for St. Francis. Hand off at a big hole up the middle. Sam Rose galloping away, nearly dropped the ball, but he's got a big gain deep into Coon Rapids territory as that line for St. Francis really opened up a gaping hole for him. Yeah, and, and again, had a nice burst of acceleration, but you're right, Joe, those big boys up front for St. Francis control the point of attack. I mean, you're, you're gonna, again, you're going to see that huge hole. You can drive a truck through that. And I think the fact that he that he bobbled the ball may have uh, slowed him down just a bit, and he may have scored had he not been able to do that. But nonetheless, a great gain for that young man. So first and 10 now from the 31 of Coon Rapids. Two wideouts to the right. Isaac Vincent, the lone wideout on the left. Skolquist out of the shotgun. Quick throw. Screen pass is complete to Wes Johnson, and he is... Tackled, flag comes out late. He yeah. gets as far as the 25. It'll be a gain of six, and we'll see what the flag is. I think it's a hold. We'll see what they call. Holding. Holding. Yeah, it's coming back. Five yard, ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. See if we can see it here. Yeah, there it is right there. There you see the hold. 
I'm not sure it was necessary for Tyler Schwab to grab on. Instead, now it, instead of it being second and four, uh, or second and three, really it, it's now first and about 19. Yeah, he had a he had a hold of Hawkinson, so he couldn't uh, make an opportunity to make a play on the ball, on the ball carrier on the receiver. So a big break for Cardinals on defense. Long pass looking left for Isaac Vincent is incomplete. Solid coverage on the play, but the ball a little overthrown, and it's second and long. They see it again. That was uh, Sean Sullivan, Sean Sullivan. Step for yep. step with him, but just a little overthrown and out of his reach. But it was a good. It was really a good toss from uh, from San, uh, Jackson Skoquist. Got it out in front. The only one who was going to have a play on it was was his receiver. Yep. Well, I like the fact that Sean Sullivan did a nice job of, of looking to where the football was rather than turning towards it. So second and 19, the handoff goes to Rose. Found a good hole off the right side, back nearly to the original line of scrimmage, but it'll be another third down and long situation. Uh, this is, I, I'm assuming this will be four down territory for St. Francis in this situation. But, and again, you know, the, the one early troubling thing is the fact that the, def the defensive line is allowing those openings and Sam Rose doing a nice job on a couple of carries that he's had. That's something that they'll tight, the Cardinals will tighten up. Third and 12, Johnson and Vincent wide to the left. Schwab up at the top of your screen, rolling to his left is Skoquist being chased, throws on the run. The pass is complete to Isaac Vincent. He's out of bounds about four yards shy of the first down, and it'll be fourth down for the Saints. Okay, does a nice job rolling to his left, and he is the left-hander, so again, able to make the throw. Just does a nice job of getting it out there. Throws it right to only where his receiver can make a play on the ball. So now it's fourth in a situation. Big play for the defense here. First big play of the uh, of the contest so far for the Cardinal defense. We'll see what Zach Nainabur has dialed up. Well, you got to be able to close the holes. Not an easy task with the meat the Saints bring up front. A very solid offensive line. A big down right here. Fourth and four from the Coon Rapids 25 yard line. Skolquist out of the shotgun. Cardinals show a little blitz. Handoff goes to he Rose and he is stopped well short. Gains maybe a yard and the Cardinals will take over on downs. Yeah, it's just a great job by the defense just to stay at home. Not, not lose that battle up front. And you're gonna see some black jerseys coming in. It's just a really nice sure handed tackle. James Kennedy on the tackle for the Cardinals. Uh, now an opportunity for the uh, for the offense uh, after a fairly decent drive. See if they can do it again here. Fake the give to Ghibli, looking for room is Dubois. He spins his way across the 30 out to the, or the 25 out to the 27. Gain of about three. And to this point, they've only handed it to G David Ghibli once. First offensive play of the game, yep. he's, he picked up 16 yards. Since then, he's been used as a decoy. They're we have him a bald sleep. eagle flying over. Oh, I see that. That's a beautiful thing, it, it uh, is a beautiful for, the, thing. for the opening game. Absolutely. Second and seven from the 27. Play action pass is complete again to Fearing. Got away from the first hit, but uh, he's going to be stopped about a yard or two shy of the first down. Great flow. <laughs> just a great, great, uh, some great hair for Jared Fearing. But again, just a quick little throw to Fearing. He's going to get in that. He's playing from the slot. And he just takes that angle and he's wide open. St. Francis made sure he didn't get to the first down marker. So now it's, uh, as you mentioned, third about a yard. You give it they to uh, number three. Third and one. Run some motion, a little confusion in the backfield, and Ghibli is going to be stopped behind the line, and that was just a broken play from the start. Dubois wanted to hand off to the left, but Ghibli was on his right. 
Yeah, that's just a little miscommunication. And he's lucky that he, lucky he that. did not drop that ball. And right there to make sure he wasn't going anywhere was Lucas Andrews. And so Coon Rapids, after the defense holds, will be forced to go three and out. Vincent standing just inside his own 40. Sullivan will punt with his heels from his own 15. Good high punt. Not a lot of distance, but it's going to take a Coon Rapids bounce. Vincent will just let it go. And the Cardinals will stop it on the roll just outside the 30-yard line of St. Francis. Yeah, with this turf, uh, the, the football is going to take a couple extra bounces now that uh, they've got the artificial turf here at the complex. Well, it also will should bounce more true. Right. But it may bounce a little further. Because in the old field, could it get stuck on a divot? Single setback this time, two tight ends in the game. The handoff goes to Devin Fisher, his first touch off the right side, a gain of two. And he's swallowed up by the guys in black. That was Darius Oates. You know, he's only 6'5", 370. Yeah, and he's lost weight, <laughs> is what they were telling me at, at practice when I visited. Yeah, um, he's and a, he's just a junior. He's a large young man. Yeah. His, his thighs are easily the size of my waist, and he's going to be a force to be reckoned with in the middle of that line uh, for every offensive line this season and next. Good time for Skogwist. Hit as he throws, coming back to make the catch. Great adjustment on the ball for Isaac Vincent. He was well covered, but defenders keeping their eyes on him and not the ball. He's able to adjust, make the catch and get a big first down for St. Francis. Well, I think that ball that ball popped up in the air. He's gonna make the adjustment on it. Oh no, it just actually looked like, it looked to me like it got touched, but it just came right down into his, into his midsection. And Max Walls on the coverage kind of got his head around late. Tried to get a hand in the passing lane, but a pretty good throw. Skokwist had time and then, yep. you know, it, the pocket collapsed, but he got off a good throw. Big pickup. And a first down at the Coon Rapids 39-yard line. Skoquist out of the shotgun. Handoff goes to Jones, gets behind his blockers, but gets swallowed up quickly. Gain of a yard. Again, the, uh, the guys in black did a really nice job of collapsing in on him. Look at Darius Oates coming to your picture again. He's just fighting off that, uh, that lineman from St. Francis, and he just uh, made sure he made that tackle. Well, I think <laughs> offensive lines are going to learn quickly. You're going to have to double team him. He's just right. oh, yeah, absolutely. A, a giant of a human being. So if you if you put one man on him, you're, you're asking a lot out of that young man if he's given up 100 pounds. Play action rolling to his left as Skoquist dumps it off to the fullback Fisher breaks a tackle and he's spun out of bounds with a first down at the 25 yard line. That one just uh, Nathan Cavanaugh looked like he had an opportunity to make the tackle, but again, just uh, just couldn't bring him bring him down. You're gonna see 14 in your picture and he's gonna try and get him around the legs, but just, he did a nice job of sliding off of him and continuing that run. Gain of 13 and another first down for St. Francis. Penalty on the offense. Still second down. So too many men in the huddle on the offense, so penalized against St. Francis. Back him up five yards. And we saw that on their opening drive. It, things were things were going well, and then when uh, they got deep into Coon Rapids territory, they had, a, had the penalty and. 
one too and many. Uh, weren't able to overcome it. There you can see the the rain and coach yep. in front of Coach Swagger. They'll put the I formation in the backfield. Two tight ends, a big hole for Rose off the right side, and a nice gain down to the 23-yard line. Pickup of seven. Again, just doing a good job of firing off the point of attack on that offensive line for St. Francis, and they're opening up some seams for these uh, these running backs. And you can see it this not a lot of black jerseys around there till he's out uh, behind the front line. They'll stay with I formation, two tight ends. Rose is the deep back. Single wide out is Isaac Vincent up to the right. Handoff goes to Rose, wants the middle. And again, with Oates in the middle, that makes things a little more yeah. difficult. And there wasn't a lot of room there. Eric Onda with the tackle. Great job fighting off his tackle. He had a good game defensively for I think Grand Rapids up, in that loss to Brainerd. I think he ended up with nine tackles and a sack. They did give him a yard, so it'll be third and seven from the 22. Skogquist will drop back to the shotgun. They stay with two tight ends. Rose, the lone man in the backfield. Pump fake, now throws. Wants Vincent, and that one too tall and out of... No chance for, for Vincent to get up for that one incomplete, and it'll be fourth down. Yeah, again, again, on first down, going for that corner in the end zone. Well, and he was throwing into double coverage, and it looked like Vincent, I don't know if he was running a delay and, and go, but it looked like he slowed a little bit and then just was not able to catch up to it. Another big play for the uh, Cardinal defense coming up here, fourth down. Fourth down in a lot. He called timeout. No, I thought he, yeah, I think he, yep. yep. St. Francis called their first timeout here and yeah, talked about the, things. One of the great things about the, I mean, so many great things yeah. about the new stadium. We have a play clock. I know, it's so great. 156 remaining here in the opening quarter and no score. And it looked at the last minute like they might uh, try to send out a field goal unit. From here, it would be, be a pretty, it'd be about a 40 yard field goal. They are right in the middle of the field. You see Coach Nick Russin of the Cardinals in his third season. There's a look at Cardinal Nation. It's Neon Knight. Neon Knight, obviously. Here. Yep. I'm loving the pink neon hair, personally. I'm gonna ask if I can have that wig after the game so that I can wear it on sports night. I thought you, I thought you, I thought you had one. <laughs> oh, I thought yours, no, yours might be red. Cardinal red. And they are gonna attempt the field goal. So out on the, out onto the field is Wes Johnson and this one marking it at about the 29. So it'll be a 39 yard attempt for Wes Johnson. Well, they have to be concerned with the fake. Skolquist the holder. Rain coming down, but not a lot of wind. A good look at it. They're set up right down the middle. Here's the kick. It's high enough, long enough, and it is good. And St. Francis is on the board. Always nice to have a good high school kicker, and they just did a great job there of uh, getting the field goal, putting St. Francis on the board first. See it again, just tried and true. Able to hit from there. Yeah, that can be a definite weapon if you can hit 40-yard field goals. Uh. Uh, not a lot of high school teams no. that, that have a kicker with that kind of range. They just cleared it. Another two yards back, maybe not, but right. from 39, he's good. Well, and we saw it on the opening kickoff, right? He blew it way into the end zone.
Johnson to kick it off again. Walls and Kavanaugh are the deep backs for Coon Rapids. Like I said, he he kicked it about midway through the end zone on the opening kick to start the game. This one, another line drive and well into the end zone for a touchback. And that is also a weapon. If you can oh, keep- Oh, he booted it. If you can keep the other team from ever having a chance at a kick return, that's one less thing you really have to worry about. Of course, in high school football, if it crosses the goal line, it's a touchback. Yes, it you is. cannot return out of the end zone. And Coon Rapids uh, really just in their in their first two possessions hasn't been able to get much rhythm. Well, their first drive they they did. They had until a couple of first they downs. They did. They had a couple of nice plays, but quarterback carry to the right, and that's going to lose five yards. Saints not fooled at all. And that was a, a quarterback run from the get-go. Put a full house formation in and tried to get him in behind him. It did not work. Well, it did not fool the defense. They did a nice job of, of, of again, just snipping that play out. So on second and long, they have four receivers in, three to the left. David Gibley, the lone setback. Will shift to the right side. Du Bois, straight drop, looks left. Pass is complete. And a, a decent run after catch for Dominic Ullman, his first catch of the game. Picks up about eight. And it'll make it third and seven. Toss to the outside. And then again, as you mentioned, just nice job. Getting some yardage after catch. Two receivers either side on third and a seven. Du Bois looks left. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Darius Eulin and thrown a little low and a little short. And Coon Rapids will go third and three and out for the second straight time. Yeah, now, now you're punting a little further back in your own part of the field. St. Francis should come away with pretty good field position here. Vincent standing at the Coon Rapids 48, awaiting the punt from Sean Sullivan. Low snap, Sullivan able to pick it up, no rush, so he gets off a good punt. Fair catch called for and made right at the 48, so they'll start in plus territory. Yeah, again, good job by the defense to, uh, to hold Coon Rapids to the three and out and uh, forcing him to punt down deeper in their own territory, as he mentioned, giving St. Francis an opportunity with a 3-0 lead to see if they can add to it with a pretty good field position. I guess they put him at the 49. sure what the discussion is. Well, there's something that, like a ball or some sort, came onto the field. Hey, you can only have one. Well, it wasn't even a time. football. <laughs> it, was, it, looked like a, it looked like a softball. Oh, yeah, it came came out of the St. Oh, Francis come, fans. I wonder section. if it was a softball from, from last year that was sitting in that part of the... It does look like a softball. Yeah. So first and 10 from the Coon Rapids 49. The handoff goes to... Devin Fisher, he was hit pretty quickly, able to force his way forward for a gain of two. But that should take us to the end of the first quarter. St. Francis has the ball and the lead. It's 3-0 Saints. You're watching High School Football Live on CTN.
When I never graduated from high school, I realized I wanted to go back to school because I didn't want to work these back-breaking jobs the rest of my life. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed to come back to school. I felt accomplished. It made me feel that I could take on whatever challenges life throws at you. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Apparently St. Francis fans, for them it's Hawaiian game. They've got the Lays, the Hawaiian shirts, and they've had some stuff to cheer for. Their team has a 3-0 lead as we start this second quarter, and they have the ball in Coon Rapids territory, second and eight from the 47. Yeah, I think it's a good, it's a pretty big series for the defense. They'd like to uh, they'd like to see if they can get them out without any additional points here because uh, you know, Grant is still pretty early, but you're coming off a loss to Brainerd where you, you probably did not play your best, and it was uh, certainly your opening opening night that game. Well, and, and only one score in the yeah. first five quarters of the season is not what they had hoped nope. for. Play action, Skolquist rolls to his left, pass is complete. Lucas Andrews on the catch. He's tripped up out of bounds short of the first down, so it's going to be third and about five. There's a flag on the play. That's a big penalty. Yep, it, they would have had they would have had third and about five, but now it'll be second and where they mark it back to their own 44, six. So yeah. be second and 15 from there. Let's see if we, they dial something up aggressively on defense, maybe bring some pressure here on, on second and long. They were able to get some pressure on the quarterback against Brainerd and Brainerd's quarterback able to Escape pressure and, and make some big plays. Handoff goes up the middle to Jones, and he's going to be stopped just shy of midfield. Oh, sorry, that was Devin Fisher yeah. on the carry. Straight up the gut, a gain of about three. We'll set up third and 12. It's a big down for the Coon Rapids defense, trying to get the ball back quickly. Well, yeah, this, this, that's definitely a huge situation here if they can stop them. Three receivers in the game. Fisher in the backfield with Skoquist. Tight end on the left side. Pass, great dive, great read. Great play on the ball. Yeah. Sullivan, nope. Yeah, that was Alex Sullivan. That's Alex Sullivan, yeah. That's the other of the yeah. twins. Yeah, great, yep. great anticipation. Uh, just no chance for Wes Johnson. Wes Johnson, I don't think, had any idea that Sullivan was there. So on fourth and 12, Out to punt is Wes Johnson. We'll see if he has as big a leg on a drop kick as he does off a tee and flag. That's and on the Cardinals. Not that it'll matter, I don't believe. But look like they jumped. Look, defense is encroachment, I believe. I don't think. I think the lineman moved after somebody on the on the defensive front moved for the for the Cardinals. Our referee, Jared Letter, will let us know. Fast start, number 21 oh, was. in the offense. The defender did not break into the neutral zone. Interesting, okay. Five yard penalty, repeat fourth down. There you see, our, you saw our officiating staff would certainly thank Mr. Letter for wearing a, a microphone. 
So that'll back him up a little bit. Johnson standing at his own 30-yard line. There's a flag. Balls. It's running into the punter. Tracks it, but this is going to bounce and go out of bounds. Yeah, but it's uh, it's going to be a running into the punter against Coon Rapids. Personal foul, mm. roughing the kicker, number 36 of the defense. 15 yard that penalty. That is a automatic. big, First big, foul. big penalty. First penalty called against Coon Rapids and it's going to give him an automatic first down. Uh, Coach Russin talked about penalties last last week. They had six penalties for 50 yards. And this is but this is this is a huge one. I mean, they they stopped him and they were going to get the ball back offensively. Now they give the offense new and life. And a pretty good field position. Yep. It went out of bounds about the 29. So instead of having it at their own 29, it'll be first and 10 for the Saints from the Coon Rapids 41. Skoquist out of the shotgun. Fisher in the backfield with him. Two receivers wide to the right. Handoff goes to Fisher. Good hole on the left side. Breaks a tackle. Dives forward for gain of nine. Well, you saw them do that against the Coon Rapids defense early in this game. And now a nice hole. Able to pick up, as you mentioned, nine yards. So now second and short. You got a lot to do, a lot you can do in your playbook here. Especially when it's an offense that is. Throwing the ball pretty well. Yep. And as you mentioned, uh, Coach Swaggart said uh, their pass game a little ahead of their run game early in the season. Two receivers wide right. Handoff goes again to Fisher. He's going to have the first down. Not much more, but he's to the 30, and that'll move the chains. Oh, and that's the goal, moving the chains, and that's what they did mentioned just uh, maybe a couple yards. Just able to fall backwards for, for a yard. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Eric Strauss who's watching in Brainerd. He thought the game was in Brainerd. He drove up say, there. It's like Brainerd. That oh, was the last week. Come on, Eric. First oh. and ten for the Saints from the Coon Rapids 30-yard line. Go Quist looks to his right, throws. Defender fell down. Sullivan or the receiver fell down. Sullivan with the interception and a good return, forced out of bounds right at the 40-yard line. Wow, that's huge, and it's unfortunate for St. Francis. The receiver fell down because they had a good opportunity here, but. Just a great, great play. Able defense, able to take advantage of it, get the pick up. I'm not sure. Well, that was a was. gift for it was Sullivan because fact that it was there. Wes Johnson slipped down, and we do have a flag. Yeah, is it excessive celebration? After the interception, personal foul, illegal block in the back. Oh. Number 54 of the returning team. 15 yard penalty from the end of the play. First down from right Again, there. that's just foolish penalties. And you know, I don't know, I, I don't know if we have a replay to see where it happened, but we'll, we'll get an opportunity to, to take a look here. 54, they called it a good block. I can't, I don't know, it must and have happened where that where that uh, player fell there, but where I didn't it, see Where it really made well, they, no difference to the outcome. They called it on 54, but 54 was on the sideline, so I don't believe uh, he's going, hey, I'm standing over here, how could I do that? On first down, play action pass is complete to Jared Fearing in the slot. He falls forward for a gain of about eight. That was a seven pass complete. Jared Fearing. Let's take a look in the top left corner. I don't need, yeah, uh, that, I'm yeah, sure that's, that's where I thought it. it happened, but. I'm not, it's a little tough to say. It looks like he had, he had his shoulder in front, but. Another play action, another pass complete to Fearing. He has a first down out to the 38 yard line. 
And that's what the Cardinals need is to get those chains moving. Yep. Straight drop for Dubois. Wants to throw long to the right side. Has a man. The pass is complete. And tripped up after a nice gain. That was a nice is throw. Is K. John Cummings Coleman. That was a nice throw by Dubois. A good, he watched the protection up front. Great protection for him. He had no opportunity to be interfered with. And he, he just dropped that right into the bucket. A huge gain. Love 40, that throw. 47 yards, if my math is correct. Correct, all the way to the 15-yard line. So Coon Rapids is rolling. Handoff goes to David Gibley, finds a gap, and fights his way down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line, a gain of 7. I mean, you see that quick burst from David Gibley as he hits, hits the line of scrimmage, and, I mean, picking up 7 yards. On second down, Dubois out of the shotgun, has three receivers to his left. And it fakes the give, keeps it himself, tripped up, but falls forward inside the five. It'll be first and goal. Well, you know, the defense knows what uh, David Gibley can do. And, and again, that was a good fake from Dubois. So puts it in, takes it out. Defense is pursuing the number three. And he's able to pick up the first down and make it uh, first and goal, as you mentioned. Nope, they, because they, nope. his knee went down oh, early, so right. it's going to be third and a little less than a yard. I think you give it to number three. They are stacking the line and showing blitz. Handoff does not go to Ghibli. Dubois on the keeper, and he's going to be stopped short. Yeah. May have lost about a half yard. It'll be fourth and one. A little bit of a high snap made that play develop yeah. a little slowly. And he tried to spin for the first down, but a good job of the defense is holding him up. Yeah, great job. Getting through the line by Jacob Green to stop his forward momentum. Biggest play defensively for St. Francis of the game so far coming up right here. Can Rapids going to call a timeout yeah, and talk, talk about, about it because it, yep. it's certainly their biggest offensive play of the yep. game so far. It's a good look at how yeah, the rain is uh, coming down. It's definitely coming down. Nice thing about, uh, one of the many nice things about the new turf is that it, it should sink in and, yep, and drain, out. Uh, drain away very quickly. There aren't going to be puddles. Yep. There's no mud to deal Correct. with. Um, I, I thought the footing should stay relatively uh, good, but you know, obviously a, a little more slippery anytime there is rain as part of a football game. I thought you were going to say the best thing about, about it is that you and I are in a press box. And well, there's the that, too. It's one way to stay warm in the rain is dancing. I do it all the time. I thought you were singing in the rain. I do that What's as well. Thing? Singing and dancing. You are multi-talented. Uh, that's, that's me. Uh, you know, rumor has it there's uh, Coon Rapids Dancing with the Stars coming up. And <laughs> so one of us might be in it, so we both better start practicing. I'll let you have that one. <laughs> Fourth and one for Coon Rapids from the St. Francis six-yard line. Dubois in the pistol now. Looks to throw. Pressured. Pass is complete. And a first down for Dominic Ullman. Down to about the two-yard line, and it'll be first and goal. Well, the boys did a nice job of getting rid of the football. There was pressure inside from St. Francis defensively, and 
You're going to see them. They're coming in here and just did a nice job of getting it up over the, uh, the defenders and completing the pass to keep this drive alive. First and goal from the two. Handoff goes to Gibley, hits the line hard, keeps pushing, He's spins, in. touchdown, Coon Rapids. Uh, just, that was great that Cardinals able to finish that drive. You know, fourth and one, and you complete that, that short little pass to keep the drive going. And then David Gibley caps it off with that run to the end zone. Cardinals take the lead. So again, number three. I mean, keeps those legs moving. We've talked about David Gibley. Well, look, they even and, got one of his legs yeah, up, and he's, and he's still going. hopping and pushing them forward. He's got a lot of power in the bottom half of his body. Well, I talked to him about, uh, you know, if he models his uh, his big the upper the lower body after Saquon Barkley, and he said, absolutely. Kick is up. It is good, and Coon Rapids has a 7-3 lead. Good drive by Coon Rapids after the interception. Able to John Patro, the kicker. Chiefly able to take it over the stripe. And again, just uh, great effort from him just to, just to keep up his momentum moving forward. You can see the, le the leg strength there, pushing and getting into the end zone. David never misses leg day. Nope. Looks like upper body day, too, is, uh, is done He's a well. solid young yeah, man. I remember meeting well. him first as a sophomore and seeing the, the physical and uh, muscular definition. Yeah. And when they told me he was a sophomore, I, are you sure? <laughs> but, yeah, he's uh, that's why he has led the team in rushing for the last two seasons. And he's I good. would assume we'll do the same here as a senior. but really only a handful of carries so far in this contest with just under five minutes remaining in the first half. Patro set to kick it away. Patro a high end over end kick taken from the three. Up the middle for a good gain was Devin Fisher, he's spun down just shy of the 25-yard line. Well, defense had a little time to rest and recoup here. Now an opportunity for them with 4.45 remaining here in the opening half. Cardinals with a 7-3 lead, an opportunity to see what they can do about stopping the St. Francis offense. What's on knee neighbor, of course. The dad of Zach Knee Neighbor. And of course, good to have uh, him the back. Golden Grappler. Good, good to have him back in black Absolutely. and red. He's always going to be the Golden Grappler to me. So St. Francis will take over first and ten from their own 25. 4:45 to go in the first quarter or in the first half. They trail now seven to three. Handoff and a nice hole again for Devin Fisher. He has a. Pickup of about seven yards. We saw Jones getting the the majority of the carries early on, but they've gone to that single back set, and and Fisher has definitely been carrying the load well for them. So second and three. Three receivers left. Lone man on the right is Wes Johnson. Skogquist out of the shotgun. Hand off again to Fisher. This time hit immediately. He is able to push his way forward for gain a couple. A little setup of third and very short. And the, the Saints want to hurry things up right to the line. Skogquist coming in under center. And the quarterback sneak is going to be successful as he gets the first down to the 37 yard line and moves the chains. Yeah, just a just a good push up front for 
that offensive line for St. Francis to pick up that first down on that sneak. Needed one, got three. Just get behind your big boys and go. Shout out to uh, head tennis coach Scott Stork, who's watching the broadcast tonight. Thinks Joe and I should uh, do some singing. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> He's obviously never been around on <laughs> yes, Kuroki. he's never heard a sick, yeah. <laughs> High formation in the backfield now on first and 10 from the 37. Handoff goes to Fisher, spins away from first contact. He's got another good gain. He'll have a first down out to the 48. I, I don't know. I thought he was short and he rolled for it, but. I just go by the guys I with, do the, as well. with the striped shirts on and. They marked him down at they the 48-yard line and a gain of 11 and a first down. Just a nice nice job of bouncing off contact there. Well, and he, again, he started as essentially the fullback yep. and uh, now taking the featured back position. And getting a nice pickup. I don't know if Jones got nicked up maybe. Joe Waldock, the other back, and he is now the deep back behind Fisher on first and 10 yeah. and a flag. And That's this, was, the offense. this is going to be delay a game. Yep. Prior to the snap, delay a game. Offense, five yard penalty, still first down. And certainly, I think Sw Coach Swaggart has to be a little concerned with the number of penalties on his squad in this first half. Well, you got to remember, it's their first game of the year. They have scrimmaged, but it's not the same as, as being in this situation. So, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out what they need to do as well. So first and 15, Waldock the deep back. They fake the give. The pass is complete to Fisher. He's got a nice lane up the sideline, and he picks up about 13. So it'll be second and short. Well, great job by Skoquist. I mean, look at with pressure in his face, he's able to deliver. Does a nice job of uh, getting the opportunity there. Good block downfield Fisher. by Lucas Andrews. Yep. Uh, Fisher just doing a, as you mentioned, having a nice, nice game here. But uh, he's he's nicked up a little bit, I think. He's coming out. Maybe he's just gassed a little. 14-yard pickup. So first or second and one from the Coon Rapids 43. Handoff goes up the middle, another first down. Down to the 40. And that was Waldock on the carry. There you see the time remaining clock is moving, a minute 50 remaining in the half. Still two timeouts apiece. Yep. That's a lot of time. A lot of time. Coach Swagger not happy about something. He's going to call timeout here. Well, you don't want to waste time. No, but he, it's not he saw, that much time. He saw so, he saw something that he didn't like. Timeout, St. Francis. You could, you could see him talking to with one of his other coaches. wasn't happy about something, so decided better call the timeout and not uh, uh, risk another delay a game. Well, it gives Coach Neenaber an opportunity to talk to his defense, and hopefully they can come up with a big stop here. would love to preserve that lead going into the locker room. St. Francis will get the ball to start the second half. Yeah, this is a big series for St. Francis. They'd like to come away with some points here before the break. Fisher, the deep back behind Waldock. Out of the eye formation, he'll get the carry off the left side and just follow his blockers for a gain of three. Yeah, 
Yeah, Fisher, Fisher, okay, just came, took himself out a little earlier, just, I think, just to catch his breath. <laughs> Hand off again to Fisher, running right up the gut. Able to pick up about four, th four more, it'll be third and three. So this, I mean, that's taking a lot of time off the clock. The clock is continuing to move. Down under a minute. <laughs> Kind of love to get a stop here on defense without any points. Coon Rapids going to call a timeout. I think uh, this this time Time Coach Knee Neighbor saw Coon something. First second of the half. As he's taking a walk out to talk to his guys. But while they don't want to settle for a field goal, they are about 10 yards away from uh, the range of Wes Johnson. Well, especially here on third down, and you mentioned third and about three. That's a big third, that's a big down for the defense. There you see the night for Mr. Fisher. Nine carries, 42 yards. And again, he is the deep back out of the eye formation. Skullquist under center. Handoff goes to Fisher, and he's going to get another first down, and somehow broke away from that group, dives forward to the 26-yard line. Under 25 seconds remaining. Out of the shotguns, Coquist looks. Chase from the pocket, now loads and throws downfield. The throw is short, knocked down, nearly oh. picked off. Walls right there, had it measured, but just could not hold on. Yeah, good, I mean, you, you've got three black jerseys down there. Going up for that ball. A little yeah, he, under, he under thrown, it. looking for Tyler Schwab. He had it in his hands and unfortunately just couldn't uh, hang on to it. You can see him <laughs> looking to the skies. Ah, should have had it. So it'll be second and 10. Skoquist out of the shotgun has two backs in the backfield with him. Pass is complete. And then a cherry picker and Fisher is in the end zone. You don't see that very wow. often. The pass complete to Vincent. He handed off to Fisher and Fisher took it the rest of the way for the score. And St. Francis is back in the lead. That was, pretty, that was a great call. I love it. I love it. Caught the defense off guard. They certainly weren't expecting that. And let's take another look at it again. Just quick throw to the outside and then just the pitch. And you've got to get you, him you out of bounds You have to get there. him out of bounds. Yeah, that's just, you had that shot to push him out of bounds. You did not do that. You need to make sure of that. I love it. You don't see the, the nope. cherry picker very often, and it was run We're, to perfection. Yes, it was. Kick is up and good for Johnson, and it is a 10 to seven lead for St. Francis with 6.8 seconds remaining in the first half. I, again, I, I like the call, and again, you, you you get the little pitch back, but there, right there, you gotta, you push them forward, you gotta push them out of bounds. You, you just have to use, you just have to use your whole body and just take him out of bounds. Yeah, that, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure when they watch film, they'll, they'll, they'll talk about that particular effort there and just make sure when you when you've got a guy near the sideline you just have to have to push him out of bounds
Devin Fisher having a nice game and good call. Well executed. Yep. And a 10-7 lead for St. Francis. And I'm going to guess they boot it into the end zone again. And Coon Rapids will have one offensive player do you squib kick. I to try and run that last 6.8 off the clock. You might, you might, and because with so little time left on the clock, and we'll see what he has has to do here. But I, I, I can understand them doing that. Makes you sense. You haven't seen Coon Rapids show the, the, really the ability, but they go on side with it even. Coon Rapids able to fall on it, and that I don't. I think that would have been my last option because yeah. now Coon Rapids, a good field you know, position. only, you know, they still have to go 50 yeah. yards essentially on one play, but. Right. But better than going 70 yards on one play. Yeah, the uh, St. Francis is just going to stack that. Deep well, they're going to, yeah, they're going to run. Four deep. Yeah, they're going to run. A prevent defense, drop everybody back, keep everyone in front of you. Hail Mary. Full of grace. You got to make sure you protect them. Du Bois steps up into the pocket, throws short, and that pass is incomplete. Yeah. Still half a second left on the clock, so they'll have another opportunity. Intended receiver was K. John Cummings Coleman, who had the big reception on the touchdown drive. But I was saying, you know, Coon Rapids really hasn't shown, and the Cardinals will just kneel on it. And go to the locker room, trailing by three. A big trick play late in the half gives St. Francis a 10-7 edge. We'll take a break and be back with first half stats and highlights after this. You're watching live high school football on CTN.
Back at Cardinal Stadium, St. Francis, a 10-7 lead as we reach the half of this home opener for the Coon Rapids Cardinals. And a, a big trick play in the final 10 seconds of that half really paid off uh, for the Saints. Uh, Fisher, Devin Fisher has come on strong, especially in that second quarter to lead his team. A couple of big runs, a couple of big catches. That one technically not a catch for him, but a good uh, good 20 yards after the catches. He got uh, the flip on the, on the cherry picker. I love the call. Execution was great. Uh, Coon Rapids uh, has to has to come out and, and fight their way back as St. Francis will have the ball to start. Well, yeah, it changed the momentum of the game, as, as you mentioned, that score. All of a sudden now now put the the uh, the pressure on Coon Rapids' defense coming back. As you mentioned, they're going to get the ball. It's just 10-7, so an opportunity for Coon Rapids here to see if they can come out and they get a stop defensively, get their offensive going. I'd like to see you know, David Ghibli maybe get some more carries, only five in that first half. I'd like to see him run a little bit more, too, and well, set, kind of set that offense St. Francis' offense has had a little more uh, momentum throughout that first half, a little more rhythm. They got a... 39-yard field goal from Wes Johnson to start the scoring. And then uh, the running into the kicker, that was huge. Uh, or the roughing the kicker, yep. that was huge. That kept the drive alive, uh, a drive alive. But then uh, Sullivan comes up with the interception when when uh, 
Johnson fell down. And then the biggest play of the game right the was a catch for uh, for K. John Cummings Coleman. It was 49 yards. That led to the David Gibley two-yard touchdown. But yeah, David Gibley just five carries for 25 yards. And remember, he had 16 yards on the first offensive play of the game. Uh, but here is the big play with less than 10 seconds left. Great little flip from Isaac Vincent to Devon Fisher. An opportunity for Jackson Smith, but he's not able to force him out of bounds. And that gives the Saints the 10-7 lead. Yeah, it, and again, that uh, it, it was a bit of a momentum changer. But, you know, the Cardinals come out here. They, they're obviously confident coming into this game, an opportunity for them to get their first win of the season after dropping the opener up in Brainerd. And uh, I, I know that uh, Coach Knee Neighbor, Zach Knee Neighbor, has talked to his defense about what he wants to see here on this opening drive. Let's let's limit them. Let's try and do a three and out or see if we can get a takeaway and just grab some of the momentum back. Well, and the offense needs to find some rhythm. They haven't had a lot in the, the first 24 minutes, but still a lot of football to be played. We'll kick off the second half after this on CTF. I used to drive an ambulance as an EMT, and I've always tried to be a safe driver. If people knew what I know, lives could be saved. In my car, if I see a truck or bus taking a turn, I know to take my time. When big vehicles turn right, they may swing wide to make the turn. If you try to sneak in, well, it's a lesson you'd rather not learn the hard way. When trucks and buses turn, let's you and I wait. It's our roads, it's our safety. Fans are damp, but they're being treated to a heck of a ball game so far. St. Francis with a 10-7 lead. The rain did stop for a little bit there, but it has started up again. We expect it to continue through the rest of the contest. Coach Brent Swaggart and his team have a little swagger to them as they take the field for the second half. Up 10 to 7. Yeah, we, we talked about it during the break. It's, I think it's an important, important drive for the defense to start out, obviously early here in the in the second half, but I think it's important for them to make a statement and stop any kind of momentum that St. Francis wants to grab here with a 10-7 lead. Devin Fisher and Wes Johnson, the deep backs. Short kick taken by Johnson from the 11. Gets a big block, and he's got a huge hole, one man to beat, and he is dragged down out at the 41-yard line, but a great return, and Devin Fisher just absolutely mashed someone to open up that hole early on. That was a, that was a great uh, touchdown saving tackle there too. Watch the hit right there. Just absolutely blew up the Cardinal player. That John was, Patro, uh, the John kicker, Patro. Yep. able to uh, stand his ground and make the tackle. But first and 10 from the 45. <laughs> Under center with an eye formation of the backfield, two tight ends in the game. And the handoff goes to Fisher right up the middle. He blows his way forward for a gain of three or maybe four. Yeah, I think we'll see uh, we'll St. Francis here trying to, again, establish, continue trying to establish something on the ground. Well, it's working. Yeah. I mean, no tricks to it. We're just going to come and we're going to run it at you until you show us that you can stop us. And they are getting good push from that offensive line and getting him some good holes. But if you can get four yards of carry, you're going to be very successful. Waldock on the carry. Well, it's, it's really a couple more into Cardinal territory. It's really about who wins that battle at the point of attack, really on both sides of the ball. 
I mean, defensively, if you can control that uh, that offensive line, you have an opportunity to limit the running game. But right now, you're seeing St. Francis do a really nice job of, of pressuring inside and opening holes. Gain of two sets up third and four from the Coon Rapids 49-yard line. Isaac Vincent, the lone wide out wide to the left. I formation with Waldock in front of Fisher. Skogquist under center. Handoff goes to Fisher, and he is going to have the first down. Or in, oh, I think it's going to be just short, if, depending where they mark it. But we'll look. see where they mark it. It looks like the, the spot is not going to be so nope. generous, nope. and it will be fourth and in inches. And they are going to line up quickly. And Skogquist's quick snap. And boy, they they stood him up pretty good. We'll see where they where they spot it. We'll see where that we'll see where they place the ball here, but I think they have it. They're putting it right on the 45. Yep. Initially, the Cardinals able to hold him up, but good push from Waldock right there coming in to push him from behind that that I think gave him the little bit he needed to get to that 45 and the yard markers. So first and 10 from the Coon Rapids, 45. Dropping back out of the shotgun, four receivers in the game. Handoff goes to Johnson out of the backfield. He's tripped up immediately, no gain, second down. That was a great play by James Kennedy to come in and get low, get underneath. Get the ankles. We're going to see it here. Watch number 70 come into their picture. picture. Going to get low, get the ankles. Bring him down. Pretty sure that's the first time that we've seen Wes Johnson in the backfield. And that time the line collapsed pretty quickly. Johnson will stay in the backfield. Three receivers to the right, one to the left is Isaac Vincent. Skoquist out of the shotgun. Quick throw right side, incomplete. A lot of black jerseys. He threw into a lot of coverage. Nick Hendricks, the intended receiver, took a hard hit right as the ball got there. See it here, just a lot of black jerseys there around the receiver. Sorry, it was Alex Samstrom. Had to try to adjust to the ball. And so it'll be third and 10. Johnson remains the lone setback in the backfield with Skoquist on third and long. Cardinals bring pressure. This throw way over the top and a little miscommunication as Derek Stone, the receiver on that side, had stopped up. We do have a flag deep in the defensive backfield. Oh boy, I'll tell you, if they call it defensive pass interference, depending on where they call it, but that, that's not a catchable ball. It was 30 yards over yeah, his head. Yeah, uh, that, that's not. Unless he held him. If he held him coming off his break. Holding, defense, number 23. 10-yard penalty, first down. Uh. That's a tough one. That's that's really is only him. a couple of penalties for for Coon Rapids uh, in the game, but they have both been at critical times to keep these the this drive alive. And and I not happy. It, that's not well. It was him. an uncatchable ball. The receiver stopped on the route, and they he was. I, I mean, I, I don't I don't get that call. I don't agree with it. But tough time for a penalty. Play action throw goes to the right side. And buried immediately was Isaac Vincent. Yes. Uh, Sullivan, Sullivan went yeah. way up top. Yeah, I think he, he, he's hurting a little bit too. Let's see again. He came down hard too. Oh, sorry. 23 is Jack Hawkinson. 22 Two is, is Sullivan. Sullivan. Yeah. So it was Hawkinson that had the interception earlier as well. 
Oh, it's our first game. We'll get better. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. Don't, don't it, promise well, anything. Well, it's 25 years. It's a, yeah. We'll eventually get better. Second and eight Another from 25. the 33. <laughs> Sorry. Well, the, I'm going to blame it on the, the red uh, on the red roster that's very tough to read. Handoff goes to West Johnson. Good pick up. Flag on the play. He's right at the first down marker. I think that one's I think that one's coming back. I think maybe we'll see. I think, I think it might illegal be a hold. Formation. Oh, legal formation. On the offense. Five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, second down. So that's a a big penalty against the Saints. They've had a myriad of penalties. A couple that have, have really slowed their roll, so to speak, on offense. So that'll back him up. Instead of a first down at the at the 25, it'll be second and 13 from the 38. They call it second and 12 from the 37. Handoff goes to Johnson. Nice hole on the left side. Falls forward to the 31, a gain of six. Yeah, Cardinals certainly want to stop him in this situation, especially after that that penalty got called on that ball that was not catchable. To Would the 31, the drive. I apologize. Gain of six. It's a big third down right yep. here, although probably four down territory. I would think. Defense looking to come up with a big play here. Skoquist out of the shotgun. Johnson, the setback back there with him. Two tight ends in the game, a receiver on either side. Cardinals show blitz. Handoff goes to Johnson. A nice hole on the left side. He's going to be about a yard shy of a first down. Well, you know, they'll uh, obviously go for it here. They're going to mark him at the 27, so it'll be fourth and two. They one for two on fourth uh, down, I believe. And they're going to call an early timeout here. 5.51 remaining in this third Saint quarter. Francis, their first of the half. Yeah, this, I mean, this is huge if, uh, if they can get some points here. It's big for Coon Rapids if they can get a stop here. Exactly. They want to make sure they execute per correctly here on offense. Uh, they know that uh, if they can keep this drive going and get a touchdown, they're going to open up their lead. It would be huge. Fisher back into the backfield. He's the deep back behind Waldock. They'll send two men in motion to the left side. Handoff goes to Fisher, hit in the backfield and swallowed up by a swarm of black jerseys. And the Cardinals will turn him over on down. Yeah, you just talked about it, a big play by the defense. They came up big and they made the stop, just did exactly what they needed, great play. And look at the numbers, five jerseys there. Octavian Padubny, though, I think I think he had. He was the initial. He was the initial contact. 
Coon Rapids will take over first and 10 from their own 29 yard line. Looking to throw on first down. That pass is incomplete, intended for K. John Cummings Coleman. And, you know, you, we talked about how big that defensive situation was for the Cardinals. I think offensively, you know, this is a situation where they, they want to get things going. And, you know, we talked about at the break only, only five carries for David Gibley. Let's see if they make an opportunity to, to feed him the ball a little bit here, you know, and see if they can get a score and take time off the clock as well. Ghibli will get the carry on second down. Not a lot of room in the middle. Wiggles his way forward to the 32 for a gain of three. Well, and it goes back to winning the battle at the point of attack. Right. And uh, that's part of the reason why I think they have not run the ball quite as much as their, their offensive line not opening the holes they'd like to see in order to have a real effective run game. Third and long, Dubois chase from the pocket, throwing, looking for Cummings Coleman incomplete and good coverage on the play by Garrett Snyder and Coon Rapids will go three and out. And not what the Cardinals wanted to do in this situation. Just a quick, quick three and out. And he's trying to, the boy trying to direct him downfield, but the pass was underthrown. He had a step. He did. <laughs> Sullivan standing just inside his own 20. Vincent inside his own 40 to return. Good high punt. Vincent will field it at the 40 and just get hammered immediately. Logan Ness just driving him to the turf was there perfectly timed as soon as he made that catch. Yeah, that's, that's and textbook. Vincent's really lucky that he held on to the ball. Yeah, textbook special teams play by Ness. Now, defense didn't get much of a rest, has to get back out on the field. I thought that he was, because it was a good high punt. Yeah, I figured was. he would call uh, for a fair catch. He did not. Apparently, uh, no worse for wear. He's wind, lined up wide to the left. On first and 10 from the 36, Du Bois, or sorry, Skoquist out of the shotgun. Looks to the left side, that pass is incomplete. I'll tell you, he's fortunate he didn't hit that receiver, the receiver in stride because he would have there been was gone. nobody there. Derek Stone was. Yeah, there was no one there defensively for the Cardinals. Just not able to make the catch. So it'll be second and 10. Fisher in the backfield. Skoquist out of the shotgun. Handoff goes to Fisher, finds a room in the middle, spins away from some contact, and has a first down out to the 47-yard line. Yeah, and that's just missed tackling. I mean, they, the defense should have had him earlier than that. That's just not wrapping up the ball carrier. Fisher's had a nice game. He has. He's he's, he's gonna he's gonna run hard. 13 carries, 62 yards. Seems like more. He has the the touchdown as well. He's caught a couple of passes. He'll get another carry here on first down, and he's stopped after a short gain, stretching his way to midfield. Second at about seven. Hey. 
Defensive coordinator, coordinator knee neighbor calling in the plays there you saw for the defense. Well, the defense has been out there a lot. They have. That's and, the thing. They have been well. out there a lot. They have right. uh, bent and really only broken on the one trick play. Caught him off guard late in that first half. Fisher again on the carry. This time hit immediately, able to force his way forward for a gain of two. It'll be third and four. You see, good job by the defense. That was uh, Octavian Pendebny again with the, with a hit. High formation, two tight ends. They fake the gifts. Goquist rolls out. It's tipped and picked off. That was a big defensive play. I think it's Sean Sullivan, and yes, Sean yep. Sullivan coming up with the interception. The pass originally intended for Lucas Andrews, and it was kind of high for him. And I don't know if it was him or one of the defenders that, take another look. that got a piece of it. it the, the fake worked beautifully. Trying for that short pass. Yeah, and then, pass. Receiver, yeah, and and then, then off, off defender. a defender. And then Sean Sullivan, who was on Isaac Vincent, that pass able a to come high. up and make the catch. Cardinals on first down, try to run left. And Ghibli stopped for a loss. Loss of two on the sweep. Red Sets in the house. Second and 12. Saw Red a little earlier, had a chance to say hello to him. He's always excited he's a, to see Shapiro. He's a fixture at all Coon Rapids. That's a, that's a movement penalty on Coon Rapids. Make it second yeah, that was even longer. Ullman definitely left early. Fire to the snap, false start. Number 21 of the offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. Well, they called it on Fearing. Yeah. I thought it was Ullman that left early. Yeah, we haven't seen much of Fearing since, since early in the game. Yeah, easy to call. Inside receiver. Yep. So it'll be second and 17 from their own 33. Handoff goes to Ghibli, breaks away, and he's got room. David Ghibli sprinting down the sidelines. They won't catch him. Touchdown, Cardinals. That's, uh, we talked about it at the break. Keep feeding him the ball. He makes things happen, and David Ghibli, he's not going to be denied. He was going to outrun that defender. Seven yards. And just like that, the Cardinals are back in front. Yeah, again, I mean, look at the speed that he has to run away from defenders. Uh, just a beautiful play call, good blocking. He's able to get around, and then he makes the rest happen. He's able to get through the second level. Good blocking on the outside there by his receiver. I was just receiver. gonna say, great block by Darius Eulen. Yeah, but uh, beautiful. I mean, he's just running away from it, and then he breaks the tape at the end. I love it. But Coach Russin pretty fired up talking to one of the officials along the sidelines. Yeah. I'm not sure. An official ran into a coach. 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. And the that's, what, yeah. that's what he was fired up about. Uh, that's that's difficult. Kick is blocked. It's a big point after miss. It certainly is considering that uh, that St. Phil, Francis has a good field goal kicker. Yeah, Phil Conant getting through and getting the block. 
And look at the job. Another look. Cuts to the outside. Yeah, so he, good. His jump cut is so explosive. It made those first couple of guys move. And once he's in the open field, it's, it's tough to denied. track him down. Yeah, he just uh, he accelerates so well. So it'll be 13-10, Coon Rapids. 126 to play in the third quarter. Coach Reston still talking with the official. Telling everybody to get back. So we, that will be. Uh, well, and, and I, you know, when it comes to that, I'm not sure. Is the officials, the, the white part on the sideline, is that the officials' turf? Uh, if if you're not, is the official supposed to be running in the field of play? Well, you, you can see that everybody's behind that white line. So I mean, if I mean hard to hard for coaches and teammates to, to not be excited and, and with a play like that, they go go for the squib kick and Fisher had a tough time tracking it down, able to get back to it at the 20 and turn it back upfield, hit it to 33, keeps moving and takes a gaggle of Cardinals to drag him down at the 38 yard line. So considering the 15 yards further back for the kick, not a bad result. Nope. Well, that defense come back on the field, fired up after uh, after getting that interception and turning it into points. Yeah. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I'd have to look back. I'm pretty sure both Cardinal touchdowns have come as a result, as a result of the turnovers. So first and 10 from their own 38 yard line, tight formation, I in the backfield and everybody on the line, bobbled a little bit by Fisher, but able to collect it in the, look at the group of white jerseys just moving everything downfield, a nine yard pickup on first down. Yeah, he's, that young man has had a lot of work this evening. He saw them bobble, <laughs> bobble the handoff. He's fortunate he's able to bring it in. But that is how you win at the point of attack. Yeah, you absolutely. Get all you your get that push. In tight, and you just move the pile forward. They'll go to an I formation now. Two tight ends, a split end on the left. Handoff goes to the up back. Waldock able to bounce off first contact, trying to get around the left edge. He'll have the first down into Cardinal territory to the 48 yard line. Yeah, good job bouncing to the outside and able to gain that edge and pick up the, the first down, as you mentioned, to move the chains. So there was, uh, he ran into his own lineman and decided to turn it the other way. Dragged down by Max Walls. And that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Coon Rapids gets a 67-yard touchdown from David Gibley to take the lead. A blocked point after attempt means it's only a three-point deficit for St. Francis. They have the ball in Cardinals territory when the fourth quarter starts on CTN after this. When you look at the number of disasters in the U.S., chances are every area will deal with some kind of emergency in the next decade. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Cardinal Nation sporting the neon for the home opener. Their team a three-point lead as we start the fourth quarter. St. Francis has it first and 10 from the Coon Rapids 48-yard line. 
Send a man in motion from left to right. High formation, handoff to Johnson, and he is stacked up and stopped for a loss. That was a yard. The, their offense definitely moves much better with Devin Fisher yes. as the deep back. We started with Sam Rose back there, and he had a nice start to the ball game, but must have been injured because we have not seen him, I think, since the first quarter. Here's Fisher hitting the line hard and taking it down to the 43. A gain of six will set up third and five. Yeah, Fisher hits that hole pretty hard. And, and again, you see good blocking up front. He's able to get that little bit of a seam, puts his head down, digs hard, pick up that six yards. Another big third down for the Coon Rapids defense. They'll keep everybody in tight. Fisher is the deep back. The split end is Johnson. Handoff goes to Fisher. Matt immediately spinning away, but nothing else there. Good pursuit to the ball from the boys in black. It'll be fourth and five. Well, not an easy fourth down situation for St. Francis. Obviously going to go for it. I think you punt. Well, personal. Fourth and five from the 43. Opportunity to pin. Uh, pin your team, uh, the other team. Yeah, you don't make it, that's huge. Otherwise, give a team that just got a ton of momentum and opportunity from uh, great field position. And it does look like Wes Johnson will be the deep back, Fisher the up back. And rolling to his left is Skoquist, throws on the run, the pass is incomplete, and the Cardinals will take it over on downs for the third time this evening. Well, you know, that was really good coverage on Derek Fisher. I think he was looking initially to see if he could get him coming out of the backfield, but good coverage defensively for Coon Rapids, and he had to go to a second option. Looking for Andrews and yeah. just a little too tall. So Coon Rapids will take over first and 10 from their own 43 yard line. A big drive offensively for the Cardinals. I mean, if they can go down here and, and take time off the clock and put another score on the board, that, that's really gonna help them to the, get an opportunity to get that first Fake win. Fake the give and up the middle goes Du Bois and he dives forward into St. Francis territory, a gain of eight. Yeah, nice, nice run by Du Bois there. Puts in second and short. Again, opens up your playbook to a number of different things. See it again, the fake to Jeepley. A nice hole for nice, du, yes, du Bois, absolutely. able to absolutely. get downfield quickly. Pick up eight, first, uh, second and two from the 49. Fake the give again. Du Bois will keep it. Spins away from a tackle. He's going to be close, but it looks like they're going to mark him just short. It'll be third and less than a yard. And now a big third down for the yep. St. Francis defense. Absolutely. Third and, and, and very short. Give it to number three. Defense might be thinking that. Play clock down to two and a broken play and Du Bois sacked. We saw that in, in the first, he went to hand it off to the right and Ghibli was on the other side. So fourth down in the punting unit coming out. Loss of three on the play. We'll see it again. I think that was miscommunication. I think, uh, you know, either Du Bois turned the wrong way or Ghibli was on the wrong side because I think they wanted to hand off to Ghibli. And he was uh, on the opposite side of where Du Bois was, where it was with the ball. Okay. 
Vincent, the deep back, look, waiting for the Sullivan punt. This one's going to bounce and take a great Cardinals roll. And this is going to pin them down at their own five-yard line. Huge, really nice punt. You see the time remaining, 7.29. Cardinals with a slim three-point lead here. Biggest defensive series yes. of the game. Yes, for the Cardinals, absolutely. At least at the, up until this point. Because you never know, we could have another one here before this, uh, before this game is over. Very true. But you've got them pinned deep in their own end. Yeah. It's a team that, that came out throwing the ball a lot in the first half and has really uh, started marching really well with their run game. Well, now in a position where they're not going to want to throw, at least typically, uh, backed up against their own end zone. They are going to spread out the offense, though, and Skoquist is going to drop back into the shotgun. On first and ten from their own five. Skoquist rolling, pressured, now has to run, now is going to throw on the oh. run, and it was nearly picked off. There was nobody over there. That was a, that was a dangerous throw because it, you know, it could have been an Edward interception. Edward Tablin nearly had it, and there were no receivers no, in the not. area. I thought, I, I honestly thought the play clock had expired. But he was just trying to get rid of it and throw it out of bounds, oh. and Tablin nearly had it. Play clock down to 15 as they break the huddle. Second and 10 from their own five. They'll keep the offense spread out. Johnson and Fisher in the backfield with Skogquist out of the shotgun. Handoff goes to Johnson. He's tripped up immediately, a gain of maybe a yard. It'll be third and long. Well, now they'll be careful maybe in this situation. I don't know because went back to the run. You well, almost have to get yourself a little more well, room absolutely. for a punt. But snapping from here, your, your punter is at least midway through the end zone. They'll stay out of the shotgun. Two receivers to the left. Vincent is wide to the right. Timeout. And we have a yeah. timeout. That's going to be the second timeout of the half for St. Francis. Timeout, St. Francis. The second of the half. St. Francis backed up deep with third and long in a, in a tough situation. But you had mentioned that you want to, if you, if you don't get that first down, you want to get a little more real estate in front of you to get a better position for punting. Well, and again, they they were moving the ball well with, with the tight formation, two tight ends and an eye formation, and running it right up the middle yep. against the Cardinals. Uh, this seems to be the situation where that's the offense you would want to put in. But, you know, they want to keep the Cardinals spread out, make them respect that those receivers on the outside. And after all, what do I know? I'm just a hockey guy. <laughs> but a big third down right here. If you don't get the first down, you have to get, well, A, protect the football. Right. But uh, you'd like to get a little more room uh, to give your punter exactly. some more space. Now a flag and is now thrown. now a flag, and Coon Rapids line up in the... That's Outside. number 70 the defense oh. lining up in the neutral zone. Yeah, I mean, those, again, those are things you you should never let happen. Never, well, that, never. That changes the situation yep. dramatically. So now instead of third and nine, it's third and four from the 11. And so now you already got that extra room for your punter. Out of the shotgun, Scopequist on third and four. Rolling to his left, pressure coming. On the run, throws, that pass is complete. That's first down. And he's gonna have the first down as Vincent caught the ball past the sticks. Hey, hey. 
That's a big, big first down. Oh. Wow. Wow, that puts them right back wow. where they were. So now third, third and nine, back to third and nine from the six. Uh, yeah. Well, again, early in the season for St. Francis, it's yep. their first game of the year. And, and a team, again, that only got to play two games last year because yep. of COVID. Yeah, they had two stops in their program last year, so they really didn't get anything anything going. And uh, so, but yeah, way too many penalties on the visiting sideline. Yep. For the Cardinals, it's not so much how many penalties, but when they have been yeah, committed. They were from, it, it came at, at tough times. Third and nine, Skoquist, straight drop, throws to the left. That pass is incomplete, in and out of the hands of Tyler Schwab. Yeah, and it was there too. He had it, Schwab had his hands on it. Well, it gets harder and harder to catch the ball, yeah. as well as the, the field might handle the, the rain. The ball is still wet. And so now fourth and nine from their own six, and Johnson, will be standing with his have a heels down. on the on the back line of the end zone. It's Octavian. Yeah, we've seen Potabell. We've, we've seen him very active this evening. Hope he's okay. Looks like it's just a cramp yeah. just based on let's hope so. The way they're attending to him, at least we hope. You never want to see any no. anybody get injured and potentially miss any portion of the season. And now it maybe it is something a little more serious because they're not stretching out the leg. Jeremy Shepard out having a talk with him and hopefully it is nothing nothing serious. You know, I already see, you know, Cardinals with a handful of guys in street clothes yep. on the sidelines. Uh, when I went to practice last week, uh, they had at least one guy on crutches. Yep. They hey, and look at this guy right here. Who's that tall guy that's, that's <laughs> coaching some some football? Sam Carver. I saw uh, Sam. I saw Sam at practice. He's, he's now he's now teaching math at the school. Yeah, he's gonna helping uh, do some football coaching. He's yep. gonna. Help with the uh, basketball team as yep. well, and uh, when I heard that news, it was kind of funny. I heard that news on Tuesday at the volleyball match, and I went, "Wait, Sam never played football." No. Seems to me the coaches, his four years of high school, were always trying to get him out on the I field. I know, never, never played it. <laughs> and he, he just it wasn't his wasn't his sport. He of course has one of the more m memorable moments in oh. uh, CTN broadcast history. Always uh, one of my favorites. Buzzer beater three pointer against Anoka. Johnson has a lot of time to get off a, a good boomer. punt. Cardinals with nobody back. It will bounce and take a good roll, but Coon Rapids will still have great field position starting from their own 46 yard line. And with 5.50, you know, you really, at this point, you you just want to eat up clock and move the chains. Oh, now up uh, with 5.50 remaining, up 13.10. Great opportunity here for the Cardinals to control the clock. And time of possession is very important here in this situation for the Cardinals, up by three. Protect the football, move the chains. Out of the shotgun is Du Bois. He wants to run to the left, and he is dropped for a two yard loss. One, he, he had room to cut up right there and thought, thought twice about it. And in this situation, start going north-south. Well, yeah, and make sure you stay in bounds. Two-yard loss makes it second and 12. Yeah. 
Handoff goes to Ghibli, cuts, finds a room, cuts again, oh, has a so first good. down and more. Finally dragged down at about the 37-yard line. A big gain, a big first down for Coon Rapids. Yeah, keep feeding number three. I mean, again, I mean, just look, look at the elusiveness. He's going to realize he doesn't have the middle, and he cuts to the outside. Look at his feet. I mean, it's just so, and he's so strong, his, his lower body. We've talked about it so many times. He's good at making guys yeah. miss. His jump cut is one of the best I've seen yeah. in high school football. Still under 10 carries in the game. I believe that was number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Man in motion, handoff goes to Ghibli, a little stutter step, and then drives forward for a short gain. Marked in, just inside the 35. Second and eight with the ball right at the 35. Handoff. No, they fake the give to Ghibli, and Du Bois is swallowed up in the backfield for a two yard loss. So that'll, that'll put him back at third, now third and 10. That, that play didn't work. <laughs> Defense uh, sniffed that one out easily. Cardinals going to be forced to take a timeout with the play clock running down. The first of the half. You see the time remaining, 308. Well, and if you gain five yards here, it's Five or more, it's definitely four down territory. Yeah, absolutely. If you don't, again, I go back to you're you're probably better off trying to pin them, pin them deep. back. Yep. But as defensive coordinator Zach Neenaver, who uh, last year was not on the staff, nope, uh, would text us during games. <laughs> Joe's a hockey guy. Yeah. <laughs> But this is a big play, no question. No question. Four receivers in the game. Du Bois out of the pistol. Will give the ball to Ghibli. He'll blow through the hole, dive forward, and he's going to be very close to a first I down. I think he has it. Yeah, I think See he has where it. they, but he, even if he doesn't, they're definitely going for it on well, fourth yeah. and short. I, I obviously, yeah, even when they it. know that's huge. that he's getting the ball. I mean, just the way he was able to stay on top of the defender and stretch the ball out to make sure he got the first down. Allows Coon Rapids to burn a lot more of the precious seconds that the St. Francis Saints need. They'll give it to him again. This time they're able to get hold of him and hold him to just a two yard gain. But that'll take another 35 seconds off the clock. I see the clock continuing to move. 
Well, St. Francis just one timeout remaining. Cardinals, I think, have two left, but not, not planning on using no. them anytime soon. Handoff goes to Ghibli, trying to run around the left side. Got the corner, a flag comes out. Ghibli cuts back inside the five. Coming back. But this is definitely coming back. That's a, a whole great job. That was all individual effort yep. on the part of David Ghibli, and it would have been a 21-yard gain, but coming back. Ouch. There it is right there. And again, you didn't, you didn't have to hold in that situation. It's amazing how he can just get to the outside so quickly and, and just outrun everybody on the field. Yeah. He's fast, he's strong. So now it'll be second and 19 from the 36. Well, you, you should continue to run the ball in this situation. I, I would. I used to play with leather helmets, so what do I know? <laughs> it took two, one too many hits. Also used to. For the final minutes remaining in the game, the offended team gets to choose whether the clock starts on the ready or the snap. St. Francis has chosen for the clock to start on the snap. Hmm. I had never I, heard, I'd that, never heard rule that rule before. I, I don't know if that's new, because I, I, it's got to be. And off, Ghibli bounces to the right side, dives forward inside the 25, a gain of 11 or 12. We'll see when uh, St. Francis decides to use a timeout. I think they just used it right here. Timeout, St. Francis. Yep. Their first, their third of the half. So that's their Please last timeout the in this situation with a minute and a half remaining. And 35 seconds. Ball spotted at the 24. So, so it'll it, be third and seven. They're going to put it at 135, I believe they said. Yep, there's, there they moved the clock. Well, Coon Rapids, again, should be able to, after this snap, even if, uh, you know, take it down under a minute, because, Definitely in four down territory yeah. now. And if you get the, the first down, you seal the deal. You most my definitely math, do. If my math is correct. Well, it's Minneapolis math, so, you know, it's a, that's a coin flip. If my math is correct, 35 seconds uh, on the, on the uh, game clock, you can, you can burn a minute 35 in three snaps. So for St. Francis, they must keep Coon Rapids from moving the chains, yeah. and Coon Rapids is going to have two attempts to do it. Except no timeouts left, so they could continue to let that clock move. Out of the pistol with three receivers. Handoff goes to Ghibli. Falls forward, ball comes out, but he was down yes, at he the was. 20. So it'll be fourth and about three. Yeah, they won't have to snap this until there's about 40 seconds left. And we'll see if Coon Rapids just decides to take it 
down to one second left on the time clock or on the game uh, on the uh, play, clock play clock and then call a timeout. Down to eight. I think that's what we'll see happen. And there yep. it is. 40 seconds remaining. Cardinals have a chance here with fourth and three. Well, yeah, and, and again, just down to that 40 seconds, you, you're in fourth down, obviously you're gonna run another play. And even if you don't make it, it's, uh, it's gonna be tough for St. Francis to do anything. It's not a lot of time no. for them to, to go 80 yards with no timeouts. But I think Coon Rapids will just focus on getting four yards here so that they can then kneel on the football. They're the real stars of the show, the puppets. They're good. They are good. There's no question. You know what they have, but they do have a, re a really good agent. <laughs> That's why they don't work much. Exactly, they don't need to. They got one big lucrative contract. And now they work for us. So fourth and three for Coon Rapids from the 20 yard line of St. Francis. Du Bois out of the shotgun with Ghibli in the backfield with him, sends Ullman in motion. Handoff goes to Ghibli. No, Du Bois kept it, and this time it fooled everybody. He's got the first down, and this game is over. Yeah, just a great play, and, and again, a good call that time. I liked it. I liked it. Pickup of eight easily has the first down. Coon Rapids will just need to kneel on it one time, and they'll even their record at one and one. Yeah, and it was a big win for them. I think they they came in here feeling that that maybe they, you know, would have liked to have scored a little more points than the, just the 13, the two scores. But the fact that they uh, played really well, I thought, on defense, stopped St. Francis when they need to needed to, and uh, they're going to come away with the win. There it is. Don't even need to snap no. it. I thought they, they would have to snap it one more no. time, but they won't. And the Cardinals get to celebrate in front of Cardinal Nation on their brand new turf, a win in their home opener. Yeah, it was, you know, both, obviously it wasn't the prettiest of wins. It was a rainy night pretty much the entire time. Uh, but when they needed David Ghibli to come through, uh, they gave him the ball and he really did. And he, he's had a really nice game. Yeah, huge 67-yard touchdown that, that gave them the lead. And then he was the workhorse on that, that final drive, coming up with several big carries, uh, helping him move the chains and run that clock out and secure the win. Yeah, and, and again, it's a good win. Now, they, they've got a couple of road games to, to come next two games at Buffalo and at Elk River. Yeah, St. Francis had the big trick play. You see Coach Swagger coming over to congratulate David Ghibli, and uh, certainly opposing coaches recognize the talent. Yes. Um, but uh, they had the big trick play in the, the final seconds of the first half that gave them that 10 to uh, seven lead. Uh, and then only score of the second half was, was the big touchdown by Ghibli. Couple of huge defensive stops on fourth downs forcing turnovers on, on downs. Then you had uh, the interception for Son Sean Sullivan as well. Uh, and that led to this play right here. Definitely the play of the night. 67 yards untouched for David Ghibli. A blocked extra point meant it was only, uh, it was only a three point lead, but that was another fourth down play that came up empty. And then the, the big play on fourth down for Coon Rapids. I believe their their first time going for it on fourth down all night. So they went one for one on fourth down. Du Bois uh, picks up eight yards two for first two. down. Two for two, sorry. Yep. 
uh, goes uh, goes eight yards and just most importantly, he only needed three to get that first down, move the chains, and secure the win for Nick Russon and the Cardinals. Oh, really, St. Francis uh, had, had did more yards than the Cardinals, more first downs than the Cardinals. David Gibley, though, ultimately the, the factor there, 12 carries, 140 yards, and two That's scores. That's a nice average. Yeah. Uh, Fisher also had a nice night, 18 yeah, carries for absolutely. 82 yards, but Cardinals uh, will definitely take this win. As uh, they move on, as you mentioned, they even their record at one and one. They'll move on next week to get to go on the road to Buffalo, where you and I will be doing it from a blimp. I think, it's, <laughs> unfortunately, it, what's just going to be, I think, I believe, a one camera one shoot. One camera shoot. It'll be uh, uh, no replays and uh, won't be as fancy, but uh, we'll be d doing it with uh, uh, all the same excitement that yes. we try to bring to every Cardinals broadcast. But that is going to do it for us. Here's a look at what we have coming up. Volleyball at Irondale on Tuesday. Football at Buffalo next Friday. And then boys and girls soccer hosting the Blaine Bengals on Tuesday, September the 14th. But that is going to do it for this edition of CTN Sports. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN. For the entire crew, including our stats guru, Harley Schultz, and Howie Shapiro, I'm Joe Young. Thank you.